Well, as the title suggests, there is a lot of things going on at the moment, and I will try my very best in the next 10 to 15 minutes to cover some of those aspects that's going on and what impact that may have on our weather in the run-up to Christmas. I uh, try my very best to not hype things up. Uh, it's not for clicks. It's not for subs. It's just simply trying to show you what is going on around the planet and how all these uh, little things, whether it be over the tropical Pacific, up over the top of Asia and over North America, how they all interconnect and dictate our weather here across Western Europe. Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. This is the overview chart looking at China and Northern Asia in particular. Why am I showing you this? Well, it may be having some impact on the stratosphere and the warming that we're seeing taking place from Asia across towards North America here. Looking at pressure in particular, this is mean sea level pressure. And we've got um, 1062, 1063 millibars over Western Russia at the moment here. Higher pressure extending all the way across to northeastern China, where we've seen temperatures close to minus 50 in recent nights, by the way. Very, very cold conditions here. But we're going to start to lose the cold over this side of the, the pole. Uh, and pressure really rockets into the 970s and millibars. If you notice here, pay close attention to this area of high pressure. That is having an impact on the upper troposphere and essentially pressing up against the lower stratosphere. And I could be mistaken. Let me know in the comment section below if, if uh, you've got a better reason for this. But I think this is creating significant heat fluxes moving up through the troposphere and into the lower stratosphere and causing the current warming episode. Now, as we continue to play through this loop, look at the pressure here over southern Siberia at 1070 millibars. That is one heck of an area of high pressure. Remember, we were seeing it building over Western Russia over the last few days. It's now starting to migrate eastwards, and it looks as if the pressure bottoms out at around the 970 in millibars here. So that, I believe anyway, is having significant influence on the, uh, on the lower stratosphere over this side of the pole. So if we have a look at that, you can see what's taking place. So let's have a look and see what's happening at 70 HPA. So this is right at close to the boundary layer between the troposphere and the stratosphere. And you can see strong warming taking place. Now moving out over the North Pacific and into the North American side of the pole here. The core of coldest air is centered over Scandinavia, Northwestern Russia, as you can see here at this level of the atmosphere. But as we continue to play through, let's skip on to a week from now at 70 HPA. And you can see an increase in that warming taking place. Remember, bear in mind, this is the lower, the lowest portions of the stratosphere into the upper troposphere here. So this is almost reflecting now on the 500 millibar pattern. Skipping out to 10 days from now, you can continue to see that warming taking place here. And uh, it's, uh, it's rather interesting to see this progression all the way out to 360 hours at the same level we continue to see that warming migrate over towards the Baffin Strait side of the pole here so we're seeing the migration of this warming uh, exiting Asia and then moving into the North American side of the pole here and then skipping finally out to 384 hours you can see that warming continuing to progress around the pole and towards the North American side of, uh, of the Arctic here. Moving up the 50 HPA, which is the lower stratosphere, firmly lower stratosphere that is, and then skipping out to 240 hours, if it would help if I can get to the right chart, wouldn't it? Let's skip out to 240 hours at 50 HPA, and you can see a renewed warming taking place. And this is all effects taking place at you know, 500 millibars and even down towards the surface. When you increase that pressure, you then cause frictional effects on the mean zonal winds. And we're seeing a, a rapid slowdown of those mean zonal winds as we progress through the month of December. And I have forecasted that if we are going to see a major sudden stratospheric warming, it will come in the month of January 
very early, very, very late December, if not early January. And then I think we need to watch maybe a couple of weeks further down the road. I do think that we are seeing an interesting uh, push shift in the overall pattern, thanks to the MJO here. Speaking of the MJO, you can see that... Um, uh, opened the wrong chart here, sorry about that. We've moved through phases four and five, and now we're entering phases six. So that is now the uh, um, area of uh, activity, the upward motion, now progressed out of the maritime region and into the western portion of the Pacific. Will it continue to go, yes, into the null phase, but possibly into phases seven and eventually into phases one? That is going to be the very interesting, seven and into eight, sorry, not into phase one, but seven into eight will reamplify the pattern. Now, if we look at the Arctic Oscillation, you can see firmly positive at the moment, and that is a classic teleconnection to that phase four or five of the MJO here, the same with the NAO, but notice the trend. It's back, it going back towards neutral once again as we move towards the Christmas week here. The NAO also similar going into the, the the neutral phase here. That is all in connection with what's going on over Siberia when you have that massive cold block of air over the, the heart of northern uh, portions of, uh, of, uh, of Asia. We're seeing record breaking warmth further south over China, parts of the Koreas, even parts of Japan. We're seeing very, very warm conditions compared to average for the time of the year versus the very cold conditions further north. That then increases that extended jet out off, off Asia, across the North Pacific. That's going to then wind up a deeper Aleutian low, and in turn, that's going to start to build pressure over northern portions of North America here. Then in turn, we see a shift taking place. With the activity taking place over the Pacific and over North America, that then has a downstream influence on the North Atlantic pattern. And this is a classic example of that taking place. Days one through five, you can see here that we've got a very mild setup in place, that phase four, five reflection. We've got the positive height anomalies extending from the Azores right the way across the UK and Ireland here. As you can see, it's going to be a very mild weekend coming up, by the way. We've got the, that, the classic positive NAO signal, an AO signal, negative over Greenland and positive uh, near the Azores here. So that is a, a textbook negative NAO pattern and Arctic oscillation as well. Now notice what happens. Watch what happens as we move through the period here. Notice here the trough now starting to move eastwards out over the Pacific. That is going to then fire up a deepening of the Aleutian uh, low, we're going to start to see the buildup of pressure over North America. But in turn, while we have a temporary push of higher pressure over the UK and Ireland in the means, watch what happens. What takes place over Eastern Asia, the North Pacific and North America essentially allows this, this uh, ridge of high pressure over the UK and Ireland to then back, it gets pulled, retrogrades westwards and then allows a colder situation to develop. And look at the time frame, 18th through the 23rd of December. We're starting to pull that ridge westwards over the North Atlantic and uh, over northern portions of North America here. That would allow the trough to then drop south over the UK and Ireland and then increases the chance of something colder in the run up to Christmas. That Christmas to New Year period very, very uncertain. There's a lot of things um, to, to take into consideration. The mod models are going to go back and forward. No question about that. But certainly this is a very interesting situation developing here. And it's all part of the long-term forecast that I've had. Let's have a look at the, the 500 millibar geopotential height anomalies. This is off the current run of the GFS operational. And you can see what happens. We've got that area of low pressure at the moment here, bringing the continuation of wet conditions, unsettled conditions over the next few days. And then watch what happens. We start to deepen that low near Iceland, near Greenland, build heights further south. That area of high pressure then builds into the UK and Ireland. And it really strengthens, as you can see here, as we progress through the weekend. In the early next week, it's going to be mild. We're going to have uh, unseasonably warm conditions here. And then watch what happens. 
what they had taken into consideration was taking place over the North Pacific and North America. Then you're starting to see that pull westwards of the high, and then that allows colder air to come in from the north here. This is the, uh, the time frame, Friday the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and this is certainly a very interesting situation. Look at where the high is now. It's now over the North Atlantic and Greenland here. So I would, I would fully expect the NAO to trend back towards at least neutral, if not slightly negative, by the time we reach the Christmas period here. I'm not saying for a second, folks, that this is a given that we're going to see a white Christmas or whatever, but it certainly is a trend towards colder, which is a, is very, very interesting to say the least. Let's have a look at the 850 temperature uh, profile here. Skip through and get back to the here and now. So we've got that area of low pressure at the moment here, bringing the unsettled conditions. We're flirting with cold air across the northern UK, if you notice. But watch what happens as we go through the second half of this week. That area of high pressure strengthens to the south. We've got systems riding around the top of that high. We're going to see some very wet conditions, actually. A bit of a hose pipe, an atmospheric river running around the top of that high, centered over northern France at 1042 millibars. We're going to see systems moving around that. This is a classic situation where we have a kind of stone stalled frontal boundary that can bring a lot of heavy rainfall into the West Highlands, even into the west northwest of England, parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland. This is a, a situation where you've got that, uh, that type of atmospheric hose pipe of moisture. Then as we progress through the second half of the weekend into early next week, we'll have some really milder actually moving in. And then watch what happens as we see that area of high pressure then shift westwards. And it's all associated with the Pacific pattern and the upper pattern uh, further north, mid and high latitudes. It's amazing how you can inter interconnect everything and see what takes place. But look at this here. This is Saturday the 23rd, the run up to Christmas. We've got some fairly cold air drilling south and with low pressure never far away. Exactly the position of the area of low pressure is going to dictate things like snowfall, etc., etc. But this is certainly a very interesting scenario. Now, listen, 48 hours from now, this might not be on the table whatsoever. But I'm trying to show you the big picture, the global picture and the teleconnections and how they can interact. And it's uh, it certainly makes for very interesting view, and that's for sure. Looking at the overview chart for the current period, this is Christmas Day. At six o'clock in the morning, got a nine eighty millibar area of low pressure to the southwest of the UK. We've got heavy rate, uh, snowfall over the Midlands, extending up through Wales, parts of Eastern Ireland. This is one mod run. I understand that fully. I'm not hyping it up. I'm not saying that this is exactly what's going to happen, but I'm trying to show you now what the potential is later down the road here. But certainly, very interesting times to come. There's no question about that. Let's have a look at the stratospheric situation with regards to the ECM weeklies. This is week one, and there's that strong warming. Siberia towards North America here. Then as we continue to progress through week two, week three, that's the kind of warming we want to see. That's the kind of thing that could deliver a major sudden stratospheric warming. Notice here that strong uh, reds are right over top of the pool. And this is the time frame, the 1st through the 8th of January. It's two weeks or so later down the road. If, and it is a big if, if it was to happen, that would be where the, uh, the time frame would be. I do think we train colder uh, Christmas New Year period into the early portions of January. Nothing to do with this at the moment. It's really down more to the, the Manjulian Oscillation. Uh, and what it's doing, moving back in the colder phases, back in the more favorable phases for high latitude blocking, negative NEO, et cetera, et cetera. So plenty of reason to stick it right here on marfoganweather.com and YouTube. I greatly appreciate your support. Leave a comment in the section below. Hit that like button. Let myself and YouTube know that you're enjoying the content. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, and I'll see you again hopefully tomorrow with more. Bye for now.